guys. <clears throat> Um, I'm here to do the adverts. I managed to do quite a bit of filming of the horses yesterday, so I'm going to add that on to this video. I've also, I'm looking a bit flushed, I've been upstairs um, and uh, filmed my Lakira box, my latest Lakira box, and also a small, very haul that I did um, that you'll see in the next few days as well. So that's why I'm looking a bit, ah, it's really nice to be sat down here to open my adverts because I think if I had to try one more thing on, I'd have cried. <laughs> Yeah, my taste. Mm. Anyway, let's get into it. Um, today, of course, is the 14th. I think I look a bit pale, actually. I was just evaluating. It means all those videos I'm going to look pale. I'm no good at um, makeup for on, the, on camera. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> it's either too loud, too pale. Oh. Right. Ooh, okay. So from MAC today, I've got another eyeshadow. It's called Expensive Pink. Very pretty. Very pretty. It's got a real sort of gold sheen going on in there. Uh, would I say I would wear that? I'm not sure. I think it's my colouring. But with these little piggy eyes, I tend to try to avoid too much pink on here. And I really like that bougie one, which is brown and pink. So it's kind of... Mm, but it is lovely I'm not sticking my finger in it in case it goes in the giveaway and we won't know until I mean honestly the pile of stuff for the giveaway <laughs> but very happy I'm very happy I'm always happy with the Mac stuff next is the Space NK one number 14 can't believe 14 we're 10 days away aren't we oh oh now I already use this and absolutely love this stuff it's the Kate Somerville goat milk moisturizing cream if you haven't tried this ladies i would recommend it it is lovely it's beautifully moisturizing but it's light it's got a light feel on the skin so if you're someone like me that's a bit oily and a bit you know can be a bit congested i i really rave about this and i have um you know repurchased it because I, I can't remember how i got oh i know how i got it the first time i got it in my first ever fab fit fun box which is sort of 18 months ago loved it bought some since and this is a lovely big bottle look at this um oh and it's the one with a with the pump action the ones i've got are the sort you stick your finger in so maybe this is the new design i am really really pleased with that that will not be going in the giveaway that is brilliant then of course we have Selfridges. What are they doing for me today? Uh, oh, they are doing. Now I've never heard of this. It's a, <laughs> a lip sleeping mask <laughs> by a company called Laniage. La Laniage. Laniage. Um, a lip sleeping mask. Surely it isn't. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. It is. It's a vanilla lip sleeping mask. It nourishes and plumps the lips. Wake up to baby soft lips. Uh, it's enriched with berry mix complex to leave lips soft and smooth. <laughs> well, as I said the other day, that's going to go into the giveaway. I'm very lucky. I don't get dry. I'm saying that now and I'll get shocking cracked lips, I expect. But I don't generally need to use anything like that. I, I think that's kind of, well, it's funny to me. Um, but I can imagine it would be very painful if, if it's something you really do suffer with. So, um, yes, there's a little pot. I'm not going to open it because it is going in the giveaway. Um, oh, and it even comes with a... Look at that baby little spatula so you don't have to put your finger in it. That's a good idea. So, um, <laughs> yes, a sleeping li lip mask by Lan Laniage. And then the last box is, of course, the Charlotte Tilbury, the amazing Charlotte Tilbury. Everybody said use it for jewellery and things like that. I, I don't need a jewellery box, but I tell you what, I will use it for my brushes and my eyeshadows, like a little wardrobe of eyeshadows and lippies, the ones that I use a lot. I think it's a brilliant idea to do that. And, and then I don't have to try and take the knobs off. Um, I get to enjoy it. So day two, again, long box, um, is, oh, oh, what's this? Charlotte's Magic Serum. <laughs> I pull the most awful faces, don't I, trying to read these? Why do I bother? Crystal Elixir. Now, I am going to try this because I've read a lot about it. Um, there are people that totally swear by this kind of stuff. 
I've never tried any of Charlotte Tilbury's, as I say, other than a lippy. So let's just, if I just put a small drop on there. Oh, I stuck my big fat nose in it. <laughs> Doesn't have a smell as such. Nice and silky and is just soaked straight in. I mean, obviously it's my hand, not my face, but yeah, I, this bit, there is a very faint smell, but it's, it's like a plant smell, but it's very nice, very faint, very pale. Oh, I'm, I'm pleased to try that because I have heard a lot about her magic serums and things like that. I'm hoping there's some makeup in here as well, though, not just all skincare things, but yay. So that was Charlotte Tilbury. So, um, yes. So I'll be off now. I'm going to say goodbye. I forgot to say goodbye when I did the horses. So the horses bit that you're going to see next will just suddenly stop really because I don't know how to go back in and change that around. Um, oh God. <laughs> Steven Spielberg has nothing to worry about. My, my filming skills are awful. So anyway, I hope you enjoy seeing the horses. They're filthy, dirty and miserable, but I hope you enjoy it. Bye guys. I thought I'd show you the wreath that I made afterwards. That's the wreath that I bought at TK Maxx for 9 99 and I've decorated it up with pink ribbon, some baubles, a few roses, and then hung a, a little thing off the end. I hope it's not too messy behind the door. <laughs> but anyway, um, I thought you might like to see it. So the dog's running around being silly. Hey Bert. Bertie. Oh, so, this is our field that we've been working on and working on and working on and we've had so much trouble getting hold of this stone but I think we finally might have enough um, and then this bit here is going to have a liner over it and it's going to have sand on it so it's a nice safe dry place for the animals to um, wander around and, and not sink in the mud and all of that but it's been going on forever i mean that, that's what comes when you do it yourself um you gotta fit in around everything else and this is the reason why we're doing this field because um this is clay soil here and i don't know if you can see if i can zoom in i'm not very good at this um yes yeah, zoom in can you see how the water just stands on clay and it just turns into complete muck and, and it's awful. It's awful for the horses. Uh, and it's an awful lot of work for us as well, to be fair, because you've got to keep cleaning the feet out. And they get, you know, they, they sink in it up to their knees sometimes and, and then they can't go out at all uh, because it's not good for them. So um, anyway, here we go. Let's see. This is Dora. 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 This is Dora, who um, is, can you hear it? Slopping out, look, she's rolled in the mud. You dirty girl! God, we only put you out five minutes ago. Well, no, it was a bit more than five minutes ago. But she's been lying down in the mud. Isn't that lovely? Look at her face. Look at that. Look at that very dirty face. Hello, Dora. And then I'm gonna see if I can get grumpy old Danny over. Danny! Danny! might not come he's a real grump is our dan he's the old man of the of the um herd should we say herd um he's always been a bit of a grump he was a stallion until he was about six or seven and then he was late gelded um and broken by a gentleman and i don't think he's ever really got he doesn't like men that's for sure and he's not particularly keen on people but um, so I don't think he's going to come over. Look at that. He's eating his hay. He's thoroughly enjoying his hay. He's standing in the middle of it. So his feet are nice and dry. Um, but I just don't think he's going to come and see me, even though I've got yummy apples along with me. Danny! Danny! Nope. No, look at that. That is just a, the arse of a horse that doesn't want to know. Aurora! Good girl! Good girl! Good girl, Aurora. Oh, it's really bad by here, isn't it? By your water butt. Come away to the dry bit. Come on, Aurora, what's this? Come on, sweetheart. Oh, 
it's not nice for you, is it? It's not nice for you. Here we go. Have a bit of apple. Come on, what's this? What's this? What's this? But I know that's Bert. Bert's been, Bert, would you get down? That's Bert being silly, isn't it, Aurora? Bert's been a silly boy. Ow, that's my finger. You need to learn a few manners. You do, you need to learn a few manners, young lady. Aurora's now three. Um, she's the only horse we've ever bred and ever will breed. Um, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> she's pretty precious to us. Um, yes, you. She's going to be my daughter's riding uh, horse once the children are old enough that Jay can have the time. Yeah, all right. Um, What's interesting is that she, according to the dentist anyway, is developing wolf teeth, which will have to be removed, which are a sign of dominance in mares. So it looks like at some point our Aurora will probably be head honcho. And I'm see they're, they're buggering about so much, I can't hardly show you what they look like. Here comes little Dowie. This is, oh my God, would you look at the state on you, Dow. What have you been doing? Look at that. Look at that! I think the first thing they do is they come out and they roll, um, even though you can see that the mud is colossal. Um, we do their feet and, you know, we try to, yes, all right. He pulls the funniest faces. This is Dowie and I, I do love Dowie. He's my favourite. He's the one that my daughter calls a D-head. Oh, here comes Danny. Danny boy. Danny boy. Hello. You decided to see what's going on? Have you decided to come see what's going on here, Dan? Here, Dan. Here, Dan. Oh, good boy. He's a beauty. He's so beautiful. His real name's Dancing Star, but we've all just called him Danny always. He thinks Aurora is his baby. All right, Aurora, you can have some more. All right, Dan. Come on, Dan. Ow! <laughs> that was a bit rough. And then we have, over here, last two. Oh, let me zoom in. <laughs> Those faces are not pleasant. Over here we have Jojo, who may come to see us. I don't know. She's the bottom of the pecking order, unfortunately, bless her. Whoops. Which means she, she gets into trouble just for breathing sometimes. And over here is big Stella, who is Aurora's mum. Jojo! Hello, Stal. Hello, Stal. Hello. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Jojo, come on, sweetie. She's not going to come over, I don't think, because Stella is here. And at the moment, Stella is very much head honcho. Um, I mean, she's huge. Get down, Bert. She's huge and she is a, a grumpy mare. So, uh, let me see if I can get some better. Oh, I wish I was better at cameras. There we go. She is a very, very grumpy girl, is, is our Stella. And she's in charge. And look at her looking around. She's making sure that nobody is going to take a bit of apple from her. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll throw Jo some because she's just not going to come over. Jojo! Go on, Jo, get it. Oh, God. <sighs> jo, you can smell it. Come on, sweetheart, before someone else gets to it. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. There's a good girl. Well done, Jo. All right, Dowie. <laughs> I'm beating out. They'll start, when they gather together like this, oh, they're separating out now, they start getting a little bit umpty with each other because they all think someone else is getting more or, you know, it's not their, not their place to have something. Aurora? You get more, don't you, Aurora, because you're such a baby. Jo? Joey? Jojo? Um, Dowie gets quite a lot because he's just obnoxious <laughs> and funny. Where's Dan gone? Oh, Dan's still over there. No, the last piece is for Danny. The old man needs it more than the rest of you. Don't start. Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. Hiya, baby. Danny's um, 
Oh, he's about 18 years old now, so he's getting on for a horse. Um, we do worry about him a lot. Do you notice he's got a coat on and no one else has? Um, it's because he drops weight so easily, he becomes quite thin quite quickly. He feels the cold. Um, you know, there's been suggestions that he's got various things wrong with him, but unfortunately we can't get that established because vets won't handle him. Um, he looks so peaceful, doesn't he? And he's so good for us. Oh, look, they're getting cross. Look at this, look, look, look. Stella is chasing the others off. She's like, nope, I'm getting it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, well, we do worry about Dan a lot, but he is very, very dangerous with vets. And I can't blame vets for saying no, you know. They don't want a broken leg or a, you know, whatever. Why should they? So, um, he's our problem. And then here are the rest. So, as you can see, lots of work to be done with them when we bring them in later. Um, letting them out at the moment is sort of, it's kind to them. They need to be out and about. I mean, some horses are stabled all the time and that's, it's fine. They, they'll cope with it. But with us having fields, um, it would be cruel. So we do let them out. We let them out for a few hours every day in this terrible mud and then we bring them in we have to hose off their feet we have to do all sorts of things so it makes a lot more work for us but um we kind of love them so we kind of do it um but i will be very very pleased when that field is finished and with a little bit of luck it should finish this week then they won't be going in these muddy pits anymore and we'll stand a chance of keeping them clean they'll still get their fresh air because they don't even run around much in this. I mean, it's not as if they need space to canter because they don't want to. As you can see, they're all moving really slowly. They're all super fed up, ears back, you know. It might be the most wonderful time of the year for the rest of us, but for livestock that lives outside right now, it's just cold, muddy, wet. Um, and they're not, you know, they're not pleased. <laughs> so this is where the goats live. No Bert, please. This is, oh gosh, the old um, barn that was here. I mean, it's just a, uh, a home homemade barn. We've built it up with pallets, so it's miles off the floor, filled it full of hay and straw and, and made it sort of... So this is where the goats live because, I mean, they are Nubian goats. Um, <laughs> They're not, <laughs> they're not used to our temperatures. And of course we do worry because of um, Jar Jar's thing. So yes, yeah, so they live in here during the winter. Keeps them nice and cozy and warm. Um, they can snuggle up and obviously then we have their water and their food up here as well. One from a distance. Typical sort of stock holding place. We've got a, a water. Um, that's a thing that you take water out into the fields and a bit of pallets and <laughs> I wish we were sort of dead posh. And this is what a country child goes for a walking, who's how muddy she is, because um, she came down to the horses with me. Come on, Susie. Yeah, you want to go in the house? Yeah, she, get, she has enough sometimes and she's just like, I want to go home. Do you want to go home? You want to go my house? Okay. Well, we can go my house. That's fine. We can go my house. Come in. Oh, that's John. Oh, yeah. It's a <laughs> Yeah, that's right. It's hoovering. It's hoovering. Hoovering. Yes, it's like, a bit like hoovering. It is a bit like hoovering. And it tidies up, you see. It's tidying up. That's what that does. Jojo. So this is Jojo. And I say, well, she shares a stable actually with Dora, which is quite unusual. But um, Dora sort of adopted, adopted Jojo when we got her. She was a tiny, tiny little thing that we picked up for. Oh, I'm trying to remember Jojo. I think Jojo was about 50 quid. Um, you can see there's lots of mud on her. They need grooming. But she's in. She's she gets to come in first and have some good dibbings, don't you, Joe? So as you can see, this is a very big stable. It's actually we used it as the foaling box. Um, it did used to be two stables and we knocked it out so that Stella and Aurora could be in here. Hello you. So grumpy old Stella is in, aren't you? You're in. We need to groom you really. Um, we're going to give you a chance to have your dinner. We give them a chance to have their dinner and then we go in and do any sort of clearing up that we need to do. 
Yes, you're a beautiful girl. You are. You're a beautiful girl. Yeah. <laughs> you're a beautiful girl. Yes. And we have little little Dowie in his stable. Dowie. Dowie. Hello, good boy. Yes, you're a good boy. You are. You're such a good boy. Um, as you can see, they all come in. They all have a little, little, little feed. They don't really, these ones don't really need food. It's really only Danny that needs food. Hay is more than enough for these guys. But it just helps if they all have a little bit of something. So, um, yeah, that's Dowie. Joe is bring, uh, Jay is bringing them in for me. Um, don't know who she's bringing next. <sighs> Who's coming next, Jay? There. Well, here we are in the dark and the cold. And here comes Dan walking in. <laughs> and that big wolf dog behind is called Coney. Um, she's also now brought in, while I've been talking, Dora has come in and as you can see she's got her food there. Um, so we have to sort of do it one at a time. In an ideal world we'd open the doors and the horses would just let themselves in and some horses can be trained to do that. Ours unfortunately we have some greedy buggers. Oh don't bite Dora! That's because Jojo looked at her food. Once the food is gone, once that bowl of food is gone, Dora will settle down because she considers her to be her baby. Um, and they spend all their time together. But at the moment, she's being cross because of the food. Even the nicest natured animals can be really stroppy over food. As you can see, Jojo's now up there. And what, what we're going to do, we're going to get two new wooden stables. Um, so eventually they can all go in individually. Um, but these two just are so close, although you wouldn't believe it, judging by the teeth you just saw, the gnashes. Here comes the beautiful Aurora. It's not seeing how big they are when my daughter, who is 5 foot 10, 5 foot 11, is standing next to them. She's taller than you now, Jay. Yeah. Proper big tall. Here's Danny. Danny is the only one. You don't you try and open that door, young man. I saw you doing that then. Danny's the only one who really needs feeding at this time of night. You know, I I don't mean feeding as in hay, but I mean extra food. But as I say, he loses weight, so um, we have to uh, keep him fed and keep him covered up and blanketed. You see, he's got a nice big. He has a much bigger meal. You should have seen Dora just now bite Joe. I know. <laughs> She looked so, so horrid. She did. So these two stables, we bought these two wooden stables when we moved in. Um, because we ended up with more horses than the stables that we had because the original stables are really old and sort of falling down. And I mean, we've done an awful lot of repairs to them. Um, so we want to get another two of these, which are lovely big, bright stables and put them on the other side of the yard, which would be over here. Um, and then they'll all have a stable each, which will be, it'll make life easier. Aurora? Aurora? Hey, Aurora. Wouldn't think she was three, would you? She's huge. She's a huge, great monster horse. And again, she's having a little bit of a nosh. This time of year, they do shiver and um, hang around. So it doesn't really hurt to feed them a little bit extra. You have to be careful. Um, some people go mad with it and the horses, you know, don't do well on it because they're just not getting enough activity because as you saw, they just stand out in the fields at the moment looking grim. So let them all have a feed. Um, and obviously they've got their water for the night. You can see this great big container of water over there. That's the other thing with the wooden stables. We can put in um, water feeders for them, which we can't in here because we'd have to drill through concrete walls. I mean, these are really old stables. These are original to the house. Um, and you can see they were much smaller. Can you see how we've heightened the ceiling? You can see the bruise blocks because the ceilings were very low in here and we've got big horses and there was always the risk they'd bang their heads. You wouldn't think they would, but they do. So um, yeah, we let them chillax for a bit and then we clean them up and that's it. That's the horses. Um, you can see 
<laughs> the Costello hanging out of her stable, you know, hey. She was like, yeah, okay, let me just check. There's no trouble going on around here. You know, I'm in charge. I'm just gonna make sure everyone's well behaved. And Dan just doesn't care. Now he's got his food. Do you, Danny? You don't care, do you, sweetheart? So that's it. Mostly you just see bums and the occasional face hanging over. Here they are. We, um, we don't put top doors on and like the windows, we took out the mesh that was in the windows. Um, because we've had a problem in the past with horses getting um, coughs and colds brought on by the stuffy atmosphere and the hay and so on. So see Dora's in a good mood now. There we go. So that's the horses at night.